Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at where we left off in the last video about improving thermals in the S1. I mentioned changing the stock brand brackets and the top grill to an aftermarket option. So I bought these from Meta Customs and they arrived a while ago, but I'm only getting the chance to test them now. Before we start installing and testing these, let's take a look at how different they are from the stock brackets that came with the case. I figured that this way we could set expectations on how well these would reduce thermals and then test to see if our assumptions are correct. First up is the bottom plate. As you can tell from the name, this replaces the bracket that's at the bottom of the case. It's got an opening on one side so that there's nothing in the way of the fan to pull cool air from outside into the case. This is where we're going to be installing a full size fan as an intake just like we did in the previous video. One thing to note is that this convenient opening for improved airflow doesn't allow you to mount a drive. So if you have a change of heart about the fan and you want to install a drive instead, you're going to have to swap back to the stock bracket that came with the case. Other than that, it doesn't seem to be much different. The bottom plate has the same extrusions and slits. So if you've got 3D printed feet that need to be screwed in, it shouldn't be much of a problem either. Next up is the mount plate. This is going to replace the bracket that the radiator fans are mounted on and just like the bottom plate, it's got an opening so that there's no obstruction to the airflow. I'm most excited about this piece but I'm concerned as well because there doesn't seem to be an opening for me to root the tubing above the spine which is what I currently have in my build. When compared to the stock bracket, the side where you have the rad port is open-ended. So there's a lot of room here for the tubing to go through. I might need to change my tubing path again before I could use this bracket, but I'd really like to avoid from having to remove the bottom fan just so that I could use the space below the power supply to connect the CPU to the GPU block. So we'll see how I manage in a while. The last bracket that we have is the fan grill, which goes on top of the case. It's got the same finish as the original and it's made out of magnetic stainless steel so it snaps in place just as easy as a stock grill. Its main appeal is that the vent holes are bigger than stock and according to Meta Customs, this is going to give you 3 to 4 times the airflow compared to the original grill. That's pretty significant so we'll see in a bit how much this helps with thermals. Aside from that, it's got countersunk screw holes if you like to secure this to your case and not have visible screws. Just note that it doesn't come with the tag so you'll still need to use the one that came with the case. Definitely excited to test this as well as the others so let's get to it. Here are the specs of the build that we're using for the test. We'll be running Heaven with the custom preset on ultra quality for an hour and take CPU and GPU thermals after that hour is up. There's a 3950X and a 2080 Ti in a single loop with a 240mm rad and the pump is running at a constant 2400 RPM while the fans are running at 1600 RPM. The sound meter is about half a meter away from the case. For testing how much these aftermarket options reduce thermals in the S1, I started the test using stock parts to establish a baseline and then I swapped in each aftermarket bracket one at a time and ran the test again. This is the result of testing them one by one and as you can see, all three of the meta custom plates and grill help with improving the thermals over stock. CPU temps improved by 7 degrees which is pretty good, while GPU thermals were down by 4 which is alright. Out of all three, the mount plate improved thermals the most as expected. The fan cutouts on the plate help increase the airflow that's in direct contact with the rad which helps it do a better job of cooling the water that's flowing inside. The bigger the difference between the temperature of the water that's entering and exiting the rad, then the better the temps would be. Based on the test, the mount plate is a solid option for custom loop builds while air-cooled builds might consider the fan grill or the bottom plate. Again, all three individually help with improving thermals in the S1, but if you're wondering how much the thermals would improve if we combine two or all three in a build, then let's take a look at that as well. First up is the bottom and mount plate combo which gives us the same result as if we only changed the mount plate and kept the stock bottom plate. This is expected seeing as the custom bottom plate only helps with reducing GPU temps as we saw by testing it and keeping everything else as stock. The fan on the bottom plate does a good job of pulling air from outside and dumping it into the case. The GPU directly benefits from this because it's right above the fan. However, on the CPU side, that air is blocked by the power supply and the mount plate does a good job of cooling the rad on its own so when you put these two together, there's no additional benefit. 
Next, we have the fan grill and bottom plate combo. The vent holes on the fan grill help with getting hot air out of the case, which cools the radiator, although the custom mount plate does a better job of doing that. So in this setup where the mount plate is stock, adding that bottom plate would give better temps. If you have an air-cooled build, this could be a viable combination. I'll cover the last two setups at the same time. As we saw before, adding the bottom plate to a build with a mount plate would not result in better temps and that remains the case here. For these two setups, the reduction in temps is similar. I ran these tests several times just to confirm the results and the outcomes were consistent. Based on this test, the fan grill and mount plate combo is a viable option for custom loop builds. There's just no benefit to add the bottom plate to this combination. So if you're interested in getting one or two of these aftermarket brackets and you're on a budget, consider how much you're paying to reduce the temps by 1 degrees. If we take a conservative approach and use the GPU temps that we got from our test, then the mount plate would be a good value relative to the other options for custom loop builds. For air-cooled builds, you could go with a bottom plate or a fan grill or a combination of the two. If you're concerned about how well these fit in the case, just know that installation of the grill and the bottom plate were easy enough. All I had to do was take out the stock grill and bracket and place the custom ones in. I didn't have any problems with getting the custom brackets to work with stock parts. The side panels still slide in place without any issues and installing the top hat on the mount plate isn't a problem. What took longer was fiddling with the tubing going from the CPU block to the GPU block without having to remove the bottom fan. This was a personal choice. I wanted to leave the bottom fan in just so that I could see what the thermals would be like. In the end, this is the setup that I went with. Getting the tube to not touch the radiator fan was a challenge and I didn't have the correct fittings to keep the tubing from flexing upwards. So I had to rely on a zip tie to hold it down. So that's what needs to be done for a reduction of 6 to 9 degrees. I'll leave it up to you to decide if it's worth purchasing these aftermarket brackets. If you're not impressed by any of them, using the plates and grill that came stock with the case would still give you decent temps. However, based on the test that we ran, there is a case to be made for the mount plate for those on custom loop and the fan grill for air-cooled builds. With regards to the bottom plate, I'd only consider it for builds that have no problems fitting a full-size fan beneath the power supply. As for my build, I'll continue using all three for the moment. I am planning to upgrade this build to new hardware. I'm just not sure on how hot they'll get in this case on a single 240mm rad. So these brackets were one of those things I was looking at to hopefully manage thermals better and allow me to stick with using this case. Another thing I was looking at was changing the pump that I'm using to something else that has higher flow rate, but we'll save that for the next video. That's pretty much it for now. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the build or if you've used these brackets and got similar or different results or if you have any additional ideas on what else I could do to reduce the temps further without using a second top hat or external radiator. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for stopping by. Stay safe and have a nice day.